This hack tip is brought to you by Hack5 and viewers like you. Support us directly at hackshop.com. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morrison. Today we are checking out Wireshark and Address Resolution Protocol, aka ARP. ARP! 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 The guys are looking at me weird. <laughs> so today we're going to delve into understanding normal traffic and being able to find abnormal happenings on your network. So first, let's discuss how a computer actually sends a TCP IP protocol packet. So first, your computer is going to send out a thing called an ARP request. This basically means that your computer has some sort of IP address and some sort of MAC address, and it wants to try to send something to another IP address, so another computer, but it doesn't necessarily know the MAC address. The address resolution protocol, aka ARP, will respond with, hey, that's me, and here is my MAC address. Here you go. And then everything is shiny and happy because both parties can see each other and send packets to each other, so everything's cool. So now let's look at an example of an ARP packet and what that header looks like. So if I go over to Wikipedia, Wikipedia is awesome, and they have a wonderful layout of exactly what an ARP is and what one would look like. So in this little graph over here, it says Internet Protocol IPv4 over Ethernet ARP packet. So an ARP header, this is what this is over here. This will have a hardware type, like type one for ethernet, and then it'll have a protocol type run right underneath that. So this could be like IPv4, which would be listed in Wireshark as 0x0800. And a step down, you're going to see the hardware address link. So this would be like a number six for ethernet. And right underneath hardware address link, you'll have protocol address link. So this is going to be something like IPv4, which would be shown in Wireshark as the number four. Below this will be the operation that the sender is doing, so one for request or two for reply, and then you'll have the sender's hardware address and the protocol ad address. And lastly is the target's hardware or protocol address as well. Now these last few could be an example, like the MAC address for the hardware and the IP address for protocol. Now I'll show you a few examples of this after the break in my own Wireshark so you can see exactly where you can find this information. The Hack Shop is Hack5's premier store for all your pen testing needs, including one of my favorites, the USB Rubber Ducky, which looks like a flash drive and it types like a keyboard. It can type scripts into a computer ridiculously quickly like this week's favorite from Fuzzerman. I kind of love your forum name. This script allows any application to run on top of the Windows 7 login screen. That's kind of cool. Ooh, and scary. Ooh. We couldn't do this show without your support, so we would like to thank you with something special. Use the coupon code SNUBS with any order from the Hack Shop for your very own signed by me Hack Tip stickers. And again, thank you so much for supporting the show. And we're back with Arp Arp Packets. I like saying that. Now, if I run a packet capture in Wireshark, which I have already done for you guys, so you don't have to wait for me, and I look for some sort of ARP protocol, I can find one that has an address resolution protocol packet header for a request and a reply. Now, you'll notice that the MAC address listed under Wireshark is just a bunch of zeros. So if I go down here, this is a broadcast from this Asus Tech computer, and it's an ARP, and it's looking for this one that says, who has 10.73.31.70? So I'm looking for that uh, MAC address for that IP address. If I go under the second box down here where you get a little bit more information, and we've discussed what's down here a little bit, you'll notice that I have the address resolution protocol request. So the request is the first part, the reply is the second, of course. Now down under here, a little bit lower, you'll notice that the sender, of course, I have my MAC address and I have my IP address, but we do not have the MAC address of the target. So all we see are a bunch of zeros. Now that could be anything, right? It's currently not known, but if we find the reply packet, you'll notice that the MAC is now filled in. So as soon as the reply goes through, that MAC will change to the actual MAC address of whoever that target was. So that .70 IP address. Now, if devices on your network tend to change to different IP addresses, which is pretty common, then Wireshark will send out something called a gratuitous ARP, which basically means that it'll keep the destination open, so when it receives replies, it'll collect all the new IP addresses of all the other machines on the network. That sounds like a lot. The destination will be set to something like 
FF colon FF colon and so on and so forth. And then the target and the sender IP addresses are going to be the same down in the description. So this information can be very, very interesting while you're doing your packet captures. If you're looking for a specific protocol type, a certain header, uh, especially if you're trying to make sure that those address resolution protocols are going through correctly. Now, if we compare this to what we saw on Wikipedia, let's go over here. So first we, we have ethernet, which is number one under the hardware type. And if we go over here, you'll notice that the hardware type is the first part, number zero. Second off, we have the protocol type. So this is going to be IP. Luckily, Wireshark lists this for you, but if it does not, if it just shows you the 0x0800, you already know from our description earlier that this is going to be the second part of the header and this will be IP address, interesting. And you can go down below this and see the hardware size, the protocol size, the request, or if it is a reply, and then of course the MAC and IP addresses of each. Now I know this is quite a bit of information, but this is a very, very important part of networking and understanding how everything works on your network so you can actually use Wireshark usefully. Let me know what you think, of course. Send me a comment below, or you can email us tips at hack5.org. And be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. We just moved into our warehouse, and I would love it if you guys checked it out. I'll be there, of course, reminding you to trust your technolist. Bye.